All right, welcome everybody. And today, or this evening rather, what I have for everyone is my full camera walkthrough, including the photos and the video samples for the new G5. So in this portion of the video, we're gonna walk through everything that you need to know in terms of launching the camera, understanding the camera interface, understanding how to change different settings and features and then later on in the video i'm going to have the photo samples and then we're going to wrap the video up with the video samples now as always this video will be long so it will be time stamped for your convenience so feel free to jump around to different parts of the video that you would like to know more about more about that being said let's dive straight in now starting off the first thing i want to walk everyone through is how you would jump Jump into the camera from different instances on your phone now first things first the number one way how to jump into the camera which I think is the easiest is by simply double pressing the power button that would take you directly into the main camera interface from anywhere on your device even if your screen is locked as long as you have this jump to camera feature turned on it would take you straight to the main camera interface now before I show y'all how to do that, let me show y'all how to turn it on. So what we would need to do is we would need to jump into the settings here. Okay. And then you want to scroll down until you see intelligent assist. And then here is where you would turn on the feature. Jump to camera. As you can see right there, quickly open the camera by double pressing the power button. This is also where you would uh, turn off and on different other different features as well as you can see for yourself so I'm just gonna leave it on the screen for a couple seconds all right that's good so y'all can see I have the feature turned on and then you can see if you look up on the screen now you would see a nice prompt demonstration so all I have to do after that point is just double press the power button and it takes us directly into the main camera interface other than that, the other two ways to launch into the cameras are pretty much Android standards. From the lock screen on your device, you just swipe up on the camera icon and it takes you into the main camera interface. And or from anywhere on your home screen, you just tap on the camera icon to take you into the main camera interface as y'all can see right here. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and walk through the main camera interface from left to right, top to bottom. Okay, so let's start off in the top here in the upper left hand side. And you can see we have our flash controls right here. So on, off, auto, it's completely up to you. Now you can see once you tap on it, that will set it. So y'all can see mine is currently set to off. But if I wanted to switch it to auto, you just tap on the auto. And then you can see it switched to auto. And if you go back in, the one that it's on is highlighted in green. And then if I wanted to turn it on, we just tap on the lightning bolt here, and now it's on. And if I go back in, you can see it's switched to green. It's highlighted in green. Now, I don't like to use flash because I feel like flash messes up the photo and or video that I'm trying to take. So I prefer to do a lot of my um, content creation or photos and video taking without flash. But you guys and gals play around with it, and you find what works best for you. Okay, so that's what's in the upper right hand, upper left hand corner. Those are your flash controls. Right next to that, we do have a built in portrait mode feature. So you could turn that on and off from here. So you can see I toggle it on. It gives you a brief description of what it does. It also uh, lets you know how far you need to be away from the subject. And then it also tells you what it sees in the field of view that it's trying to blur the background on. Okay, so you get a really nice description, and if I tap it again, that will turn it off. So you can see now it's turned off, and then if I want to turn it back on, we tap it again, get that nice description, and then now it's turned on. Okay, now let's turn that back off. All right, then right next to that, we have our AI controls. So 
our AI is pretty much self-explanatory. With AI turned on, the camera itself will try to do all the work. It will try to take a look at the scene and op optimize the scene for what it thinks you're trying to take a photo or a video of. So you can see if I tap on it, it will turn it on. Okay. And then it will scan the scene and try to expose it for the best possible photo and or video. And if I don't want that, we just tap it again and it turns it right back off. Okay. Then directly next to that in the upper right hand corner, we have our gear icon that will let us control some more different settings for the camera. So if we tap on that, it will take us into our sub settings. Now what's neat about these sub settings on the new G5 is that it lets you go into the sub settings without taking you out of the main viewfinder. So you can quickly change settings or toggle settings while still seeing a good reference point of whatever photo or video you're trying to take a picture of. So I actually think that is really cool. So let's dive into these sub settings right here. So in the upper left hand corner on the sub settings, we have our picture size. So if you tap on this, this is where you can get an idea of the actual megapixel size of the camera. So you can see maximum megapixels here is 16, and that's for the primary 16 megapixel sensor, and that is in the 4 by 3 aspect ratio. Now if you want to go full view, you can bump it down to 10 megapixels, or you can do 4 by 3 in 8 megapixel mode, or you can do full view in 7 megapixel mode. Okay, so that's also how you can verify the actual megapixel size of your camera. All right, right next to that is we have a toggle for our um, location metadata. Okay, so it will help the camera or your gallery of choice uh, easily sort your photos or videos by using the metadata location tag. Now, I always turn this off because if you leave that turned on and then you publish a video to social media or, or a different third-party platform, that metadata is incorporated into the code that you published. So anybody with a little bit of technical know-how can go in, find your location, or at least the location where the picture was taken, and then they will know where you are. Now, for privacy purposes, I always turn that off on every camera that I pick up on every device, but y'all mess around with that and you decide what works best for you, all right? Then right next to that, we have our watermark or our branding watermark. So that just adds that quick little toggle in the bottom corner that says shot on the new G5. Y'all will see some of that in the photo samples a little bit later on. Then we have a quick mute toggle for the camera. So you can have the shutter sound on or you can turn the shutter sound off with this quick toggle here. Then we have tap and shoot. So if I turn on tap and shoot, all I have to do is touch anywhere on the, on the camera here. Once I come out, it's going to focus and it's going to take the shot. Bam. That's real easy tap and shoot. That really does come in handy if you, you know, your subject is moving fast and you want to dial in some settings and you get them to sit still for a little bit and you just tap it and let it handle its business there. Then right next to touch and shoot, or did I say tap and shoot? We have our timer. So we got a two second timer or a 10 second timer, or you could turn it off. Now I really do enjoy timers. I don't know why they don't have a timer for video, but I feel like timers let me uh, ready myself before the actual shot. So if I'm taking a photo, I will always take the time to line it up and then use the timer to make sure I get that nice steady shot. But you toggle this for yourself and you decide which time or no time works best for you. Those are your timer controls. Then right next to that, we got our grid lines. Now we only got one set of grid lines here. We got the three by three. That's it. So you can either turn on three by three or you tap it again and you turn it off. It's up to you. Then we have our zero shutter lag here. So that, as the name implies, it makes the shutter speed on the camera faster. This way you don't have as many issues. Now, without it, you may sometimes see a little bit of a delay, okay? 
But I just like to turn it on so I can make it as fast as possible. This way, if I have something that I'm trying to take a picture of, there's nothing slowing me down. But you turn it off and on as you see fit. So that's your uh, zero shutter lag there. Then we have our volume controls right here. So you could set up the volume controls to zoom, to take a photo, and or take a video, depending on the mode that you're in, or control the volume. All right? It's completely up to you. I always set mine up to do zoom because I feel like that's the most convenient way to zoom. All right? Then we have our anti-banding and anti-flickering here. Now, I'm not entirely sure what this does, so I just leave it on auto. If one of you guys and gals know, please leave that feedback down below in the comments. I would be really interested to know what this does. But I'm no camera professional by any shape, form, or fashion. So it is what it is. I'm just giving y'all my opinion and try to walk through these things in a neat and concise fashion for everyone to easily understand. Then right next to that, we have a camera reset button. So you can tap reset and turn the cameras back to the factory default settings as if the first time you took them out of the box. So you can see here if I go reset. It said, are you sure you want to put the camera back to factory settings? I go, okay. And it's going to put everything back to factory settings. It's going to ask me if I want to grant my location status. I'm going to say no. Then it's going to tell me, you know, without that metadata, you know, some things won't be quantified. I'm okay with that. And you can see if I jump back in now, the camera flash is set to auto. It comes to that by default. And if we go in here, the branding is on by default, the zero shutter lag is on by Z default, and the camera is muted by default, as you can see there. All right? So real quickly taking you through those subsettings, then we have our main composition viewfinder window here. Then just below that in the center, we got a quick toggle to jump to the wide angle 8 megapixel camera. So if we jump to the wide angle camera here, then you can see that. And then I wonder if we jump into the settings, if it would tell us that it's the wide angle camera. So if we go in here, yes, indeed. So you can see this is indeed an 8 megapixel ultra wide camera. So you can record an 8 megapixel mode in 4x3, or you can bump it down to 5 megapixel mode, but it's still going to be in 4x3 no matter what you do. And also, when you use the ultra wide camera, you can see we have a wide angle correction toggle here. So that try that tries to even out the fish eye or a wide angle effect to make it more even. Now, I don't really mess with that, so I just left it on by default. But even if I didn't, I already factory reset the cameras back to default. So it is what it is. This is exactly how the ultra wide camera comes set up out of the box, but you can see the same settings apply. All right, same volume settings, all that good stuff here. All right, now let's keep it moving. Now directly below that, let's go back to the primary so we could toggle that off. And now we're back to the primary 16 megapixel sensor. Mm -hmm. Directly below that, we have a few different sliders for our different modes. So let's go ahead and slide through this from left to right. So let's keep sliding here all the way to the end. So y'all can see we do have a dedicated night mode here. Let's see if there's any additional sub settings from night mode. Nope, there is not. Okay. Then after night mode, we have an, a high definition mode here. High dynamic range, high definition. You get the idea. It's just going to try and pull out the most color out of the shot as possible. Let's see if there's any additional any additional settings here. Nope. Okay. Then right next to that, we got our primary video mode. Now, in terms of the video mode, this camera can only record video with the primary 16 megapixel camera here. And you can see we have our flash controls in video. Or we can change up our video resolutions. So this camera maxes out at a recording resolution of 1080p, 30fps, and it goes all the way down to CIF. I don't know what CIF is. The lowest I would go is 480p, which is standard DVD definition. All right. 
So the most y'all are going to see in this video is 720p and 1080p footage. Because honestly, when I record, I'm either recording in 720p or I'm recording in 1080p to keep these file sizes down to a manageable minimum. But that's just so you can see the maximum resolutions that these cameras can record at. And again, you can only record video with the primary 16 megapixel camera. All right. Other than that, we can control our, my bad. We can control our microphones from here. So we can mute the microphones and take a silent video. So if you're trying to do B-roll, you would toggle that off. Or if you want to record actual audio, you toggle that on. Then we have our grid lines, okay? Same three by three grid lines here. Volume controls, again, shutter, which in, in video mode is the record, zoom, and then volume, all right? Just so y'all know. Then we got the anti-flicker, the anti-flicker and the reset, okay? So that's everything we got for video. And if we jump to the front facing camera here, it's the same rules that apply for the front facing camera. So we got a front facing 16 megapixel secondary sensor. And if we go over here, you can see it also maxes out at the same resolution as the rear cameras. So the max is 1080p, 30 FPS. All right. And we don't have access to the additional modes here. So you can see if we go back to HDR mode, it switches us back to the rear. If we go to night mode, we can't switch to the front facing camera for night mode. But if we go back to the primary photo mode and switch to the front facing camera, y'all can see we can indeed do uh, front facing portraits here. You can see it right here. So if I tap on that, it toggles on the portrait mode. And you can see it gives you a live... Um, image of what's going to happen so you can see the blurred out background is now digitally inserted so you get a, a nice live photo before you snap the shutter button all right and then we can also verify here in the front facing camera that the front facing camera is indeed a 16 megapixel shooter as you can see there and it pretty much lines up the same as the rear facing camera so 16 10 7 and 4 so you can go as low as 4 megapixels with the front facing camera. All right? Just wanted to show y'all that. Now we don't have any other additional modes aside from that. So if we go to Super HDR mode, it's going to bump us back to the rear facing camera. Super HDR is just news attempt to take a super high definition photo similar to the to to the regular HDR mode. It's kind of redundant in my opinion, so I didn't actually use it uh, when you look at the photo samples. I pretty much kept everything in auto mode or I turned on portrait mode, okay? So between that and using the wide angle camera, that's pretty much all I did in terms of snapping photos with the new G5, okay? So that's super high definition mode. Then we have a full dedicated pro mode where we can control pretty much everything so we got white balance right here and they got this nice little slider for white balance i like it we got iso right here and again got your nice little slider here i like that as well um <clears throat> all that good stuff is here auto focus auto exposure all that stuff is here so you can dial in a nice manual shot if you would like and then if we go over to the more section we have a few other different uh, camera modes so we have an animated gif maker y'all know if y'all like to make gifs or gifs I don't know how you want to pronounce that they have a gif maker in here or a gif maker in here then we have our filters as well so we got all of our filters in here too a bunch of different filters are in there and then if we go back to more we got a beauty mode in here we got a panoramic mode we got a slow motion mode time lapse there is a built-in barcode scanner and if you go up go to macro or close-up this theoretically is letting us use the two megapix the two megapixel macro camera now in all honesty I don't feel like it's doing much 
But just let me show y'all. Y'all let me know what you think. Does that look better with the 2 megapixel camera or worse? Now, in all honesty, I tried some macro shots, and I didn't really like the way they came out. So y'all won't see any macro shots in here either. Everything y'all will see in terms of the uh, photo cameras is going to be done with the primary cameras or the ultra-wide camera. Okay? Again, I didn't like it. I didn't like the way it turned out, so I decided not to use it. But technically, when you go into macro mode, it's supposed to be using the 2 megapixel macro sensor along with the depth sensor to get you some nice focus. But I didn't really see any type of improvement. And honestly, the macro photos did not turn out good at all. All right. Okay. And that pretty much does it for our photo modes on the new G5. All right, so I hope everyone enjoyed this portion of the video. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and cut in the photo samples, and then directly after that, we're gonna go ahead and cut in the video samples, and y'all be sure to leave me all your feedback down below in the comments. As always, all feedback is greatly appreciated. Just keep it respectful, please. All right, I will see you guys at the end of the video. Have a good one, everybody. We're out of here. Peace. doing today welcome back to another video for everyone and today we're going to get into the camera testing with the new mobile g5 so starting off here today we're going to do the 720p testing outdoors indoors daytime low light nighttime artificial lighting so on and so forth and we're going to test out the rear facing primary 16 megapixel camera and the front facing secondary 16 megapixel camera so just for reference all of these tests will be done using the primary cameras and they'll be done with no external audio hooked up 
So please let me know what y'all think of the overall video quality as well as what you think of the overall audio quality down below in the comments. All feedback, as always, is greatly appreciated. So let's dive straight into the testing. So starting off, we're going to start off with the pan testing. So we're going to pan all the way from here, all the way through to right about there. And we're going to do this three times. So y'all let me know what you think. Here we go. So that was one. Here we go with number two. Okay, that was two. And then here we go with number three. And that was three. All right, now let's go ahead and get into the exposure testing. So we're gonna pan up to the, to the tree in the distance here. Then we're going to pan down to the ground, and we're going to do this three times, okay? So what we're looking for when we test the exposure is we want a nice even transition from the lighter areas of the scene to the darker areas of the scene with minimal exposure blowout. And if the cameras do blow out, we want them to recover as evenly and as quickly as possible. So let's get into this exposure test, and we're going to do this three times as well. So panning up and out. Okay, that's one, going back down, pan it up and out, that's two, going back down, last one, pan it up and out, that's three. So what do y'all think? How did it do with the exposure? How was the stabilization? Let me know down below. Now, looking at the viewfinder and giving y'all my thoughts, I think it actually did a pretty good job. It did blow out pretty much every time, but it recovered very nicely. So what do y'all think? All right, now let's get into some of the focus testing. All right, so a real neat thing about the new mobile G5 is that we do have tap to focus as well as exposure controls. So as soon as you tap on your subject, you'll see a white bar come up with something that you could just press and hold on. And if you scroll down, you can underexpose. And if you scroll up, you can overexpose or balance out the exposure to your liking. And if you let it go, it will stay locked to that exposure. All right. Then if you want to go back to autofocus or auto exposure, you just tap anywhere on the scene for it to go back to auto focus and auto exposure. So you do have uh, focus controls as well as continuous autofocus, and you do have exposure controls as well. And you do still have the ability to take photos while in video mode as well. So you can do all the stuff that you have become used to with this camera um, on the new mobile G5. So, Really good stuff there. So let's get into the focus testing and let's test out the continuous autofocus first. So we're going to pick our three focal points. We're going to use the bushes here off to my left. We're going to use the tree in the middle here. And then we're going to use this white pillar off to my right. So we're going to cycle through these three times. And y'all let me know how you think the cameras did in terms of the autofocus. Here we go. Bushes. Tree in the middle, pillar. What do you think? One. Again, bushes, tree in the middle, pillar. Two. Last one, bushes, tree in the middle, pillar. That's number three. Now let me adjust my grip here. And let's do the same thing. But let's use the tap to focus and see if there's any difference. So bushes, tap, locked up. And I did see a autofocus, um, autofocus and auto exposure adjustment there. But the focusing speeds were really, really fast. And locked up within fractions of a second. So not bad. Coming over to the big tree in the middle, tap. Locked up, pillar, tap, locked up. Not bad, not bad at all. 
So focusing speeds on the new Bumble G5 seem to be really, really good. Let's do it one more time. Bushes, tap, locked up, tree in the middle, tap, locked up, pillar, tap, locked up. Really, really good stuff there. Now, I am noticing when I lock focus on the pillar, it does um, overexpose the background. So, there is that. But the overall focusing speeds are really, really good. All right? Now, last but certainly not least, before we wrap this video up, let's go ahead and test out the Zoom. One of the reasons why I like to test out the Zoom is because it tests out multiple different things at the same time. It tests out the stabilization. It tests out the detail retention as you zoom in, so on and so forth. Now, one thing I also want to point out is that we don't have any type of OIS or EIS with these cameras, so no optical image stabilization and no electronic image stabilization with these cameras. So there's no type of stabilization aside from my hand or if I use a stabilize, stabilizer, so on and so forth. So let's focus on the bushes all the way out there. Let me lock the focus. And now when we zoom in, we could do the pinch to zoom like so. So you can pinch it pinch in and out and stop in between at any point you want or you can set up your volume rockers okay to zoom you in and out in 0.3 increments okay and I really do like that the fact that we get to use our volume rockers so that is what I like to use so now y'all can see there is no zoom and let's take it up to 1.3 times so this is 1.3 Okay, 1.6, 1.9, 2.2, and actually, the colors are kind of good here, but the detail, there's a noticeable detail loss here. So if it was me, and you wanted to zoom in, I would say stop at 1.6. 1.6 still looks pretty good, but let's keep going nevertheless. So... 2.2, 2 2.5, 2.8, 3.1, 3.4, 3.7, 4 times zoom. And I do believe that's as far as you can go. So here's what the picture looks like, and here's what the stabilization is at 4 times zoom here. And y'all can see this actually looks really, really bad. The colors are super blotchy, and it's super blown out. And you can see it doesn't do a good job retaining any type of detail here. So I would not recommend you use the maximum zoom with these cameras. Again, if it was me, I would stay at 1.6 or 1.5. Okay, let's zoom all the way back out. So let me know what y'all think. Real quick camera test in 720p with the primary 16 megapixel cameras on the new mobile G5. Now let's spin it around to the front facing camera and do some more testing. I will be right back. I'll see y'all in a second. All right, everyone. And now we're testing out the front facing 16 megapixel camera on the new mobile G5. And this is also being recorded in 720p, 30 FPS, with no external microphone hooked up. So let me know what y'all think. How's the detail on my face? How's it doing with my skin tone? How are the colors? How's the stabilization? How's the, separis the separation between me and the foreground versus the windows and the textures of the house in the background? What do y'all think? What do y'all think? Now looking through the viewfinder, I can say it is having a little bit of an issue exposing properly for my skin, and I can't I can't adjust the exposure with the stock camera app. So what it locks in when I push record for the front facing camera is what we get. So it is having a tough time exposing for my skin properly, but other than that, the video looks good. Hopefully the audio is good. Y'all let me know your thoughts down below. 
Now, let me go ahead and run inside and we're gonna do some more indoor daytime low light testing with these cameras. So I will be right back with some more tests. I'll see y'all in a second. We out of here. All right, everybody. And here we have it. This, is, this time we're testing out the front facing 16 megapixel camera on the new mobile G5. And this is indoors daytime low light. Now, what I've also done is I've added an artificial lighting source because the daylight got away from me today. I'm not even gonna lie to y'all. Um, by the time I realized that I forgot to record these, I was like, oh, we ain't got too much daylight left. And if I turn off the light, let me show you real quick. So let's turn the light off just so y'all can see what it'll look like without the light on. Turn the light off. And now back up here. It looks a little dark to me. It could be my eyes playing tricks on me, but it looks a little dark to me. That's why I went ahead and I added the artificial light there. Just to add a little bit of extra light to the scene. You know, not much. Kind of got it angled off out the way. Just add a little bit of extra light. But real quickly, real quick front facing 16 megapixel camera test on the new mobile G5. Just a standard stationary vlog style test. Y'all let me know what you think. No external audio hooked up. All right now let's go ahead and spin the cameras around and give y'all a primary rear facing camera test in the same lighting scenarios let's go i'll be right back all right everyone and we are back in and today i got an extreme indoor daytime low light test for y'all with the rear facing 16 megapixel camera on the new mobile g5 so y'all can see the only light source we're using here today is coming in through the window here there are no other external light sources here and y'all can see i do apologize the daylight just got away from me but i want to do the test nevertheless and i might throw in some external lighting just to help out if it gets really bad but let's do the testing nevertheless Okay, so bringing it over, okay, angling it up, first getting it straight on, that looks good, then we're going to angle it down, that also looks good, oh yeah, nah, 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 where's my light at, where is my light at, that's too dark, yeah, nah, let's, let's hook up this light, y'all. I'm not going to torture y'all eyes like that. Let me hook this light up real quick. Okay. And let's turn this on. There y'all go. Yeah. Not, I'm not going to torture y'all. We don't do none of that torture stuff around here. We don't, we don't break devices. We don't hurt people's eyes. Yeah. So here's what it looks like indoors, daytime, low light with some external lighting on it. So y'all let me know how y'all feel the new mobile G5 cameras are doing. Now, one thing that I don't like about the new mobile G5 and their camera setup is you only have access to all the cameras in photo mode. When you're recording video, you can only record video with the front primary 16 megapixel sensor or the rear primary 16 megapixel sensor. So when I'm recording video, I don't have access to the eight megapixel ultra wide. I don't have access to the two megapixel depth sensor. I don't have access to the two megapixel macro sensor. I just can use the 16 megapixel primary and new, y'all need to change that up. At least for video, you need to give us as the end consumer two perspectives. We need the primary perspective, which you delivered, and you do a great job, and we need the ultra-wide perspective, okay? Especially when it comes to video, those are the two perspectives I feel end consumers really want. So you need to deliver on both of those aspects. 
So I'm kind of bummed out that we can only use the primary 16 megapixel camera, but it is what it is. Let's move on with the testing, nevertheless. So picking this up, what do y'all think of the detail there? Now, that doesn't look too bad. It's noticeably sharp and readable. It's a little grainy. But for the price and what the device is, that's pretty good. All right. Put that down. Now, let's test out the focusing speeds real quick. So picking my mouse up here. Bring the mouse in. And yeah, it's, it's definitely struggling in the lower light scenarios here. Might need a little bit of help. Yeah, it needed a little bit of help. So once I help it, it did a good job. Let's let's go back to the keyboard now. Oh yeah, definitely struggling. Let me help it a little bit. Okay, yep, definitely needs help in the lower lighting scenarios. So the new mobile G5, if you're gonna record, you're definitely gonna need adequate to good lighting. Otherwise, it's definitely going to struggle. So that pretty much does it for the indoor daytime low light test with the front and rear facing cameras on the new mobile G5. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to wait for the sun to go down all the way and we're going to redo some similar testing indoor nighttime artificial lighting and we're going to see how the cameras perform there as well. So I will be right back with those set of tests. I'll see y'all in a little bit because the sun is almost down. I'll be right back. All right, so the sun has officially went down and just finished eating dinner. So I figured I'd come sit in the room, chill, and record these video clips. So this is a front-facing camera test of the front-facing 16 megapixel camera on the new mobile G5. And this is being recorded in 720p at 30 FPS with no external microphone hooked up. And this is a nighttime artificial lighting test. Real quick, front facing stationary camera sample here. So y'all let me know what you think. How do you feel the front facing camera is performing in this lighting scenario? Now, other than slightly transitioning between overexposed and underexposed, I feel like these cameras are doing a really good job. Also, let me know how you feel the audio is. That being said, let's now jump to the rear-facing camera and do some rear-facing camera tests in this low-light artificial lighting scenario. So I will be right back. I'll see y'all in a second. Okay, everyone, and now I'm back. Real quickly, I just spun the cameras around, so now we're using the rear-facing primary 16 megapixel camera to record this indoor nighttime artificial lighting test. And just to verify for everyone, just so you can see, it is indeed nighttime outside. So we have no light coming in through the window here. And if I pan up, y'all can see the only thing lighting up the scene here is the overhead artificial room lighting. So now let's put everything down, angle it up, and do some testing here. Let's go. So let's get it straight on like right about there, that looks good. And now let's angle it down, boom. Actually, I gotta back it up just a little bit and slide it over. All right, that looks good, that looks real good. And so here, y'all can see just how the cameras are performing in this indoor nighttime artificial lighting test. So check out the detail on the keys on the keyboard. What do y'all think of that? Now, this does look really good. Now, it's slightly grainy, but it's more than readable and more than usable. So not bad, not bad at all. Now, real quickly before we wrap this video up, let's just do a real quick focusing test here. So, you know what, let's use one of the cases for the earbuds here. Got the J-Labs case right here. Check this out. Look at that focus. Now, it is focused, but it doesn't look quite focused. So let me see if I help it out a little bit. All right. That doesn't make it look any better. Okay, let me take it out. Definitely struggles to refocus. 
And you can see I got to kind of help it out. So let me help it out. And then it refocuses after a little bit of help. Let's do it one more time. Bring back in the JLabs case. Now it's in focus, but it doesn't look too sharp. Let me help it out here. Okay. And then let's go back to the keyboard now. And again, it's definitely struggling. You see how it's out of focus? Let me help it out. And there we have it. So the focusing speeds in less than good lighting for the new mobile G5 cameras are not the best, but once you help it out, once you're a little bit patient with it, you can get a decent usable shot. All right, y'all, that pretty much does it for this one. Now, a little bit later on this week, we're gonna wrap up the testing on these cameras with the 1080p testing, because these cameras max out at 1080p, 30fps on the front and the rear. So we ain't got to do too much with this. So that's going to be a little bit for me, but it's going to be like a couple seconds for y'all. So let's move on to the final set of tests with the new mobile G5 cameras. I'll be right back with that for y'all. See y'all in a second. All right, everyone. And now we are back in and we are in shooting space number two here today. And this video is being recorded in 1080p. 30 FPS using the rear and front facing cameras on the new mobile G5. So starting off here, we're testing out the rear facing 16 megapixel camera. There is no external audio hooked up. And let's jump straight into the testing here. So starting off with the testing, we're gonna do the pans. So we're gonna pan from here all the way through to right about there. And come on back, we're gonna do this three times. So that was one. Here we go with number two. All right, that's two. And here we go with number three. Now it is a gorgeous day out today. Other than the fact that it's a little chilly, this is perfect lighting weather here. So I'm really interested to see how these cameras perform. So that's number three. Let's go directly into the exposure test. So we're gonna make sure we're lined up on the pool heater there and then we're gonna pan down to the ground. Boom. And we're gonna do this three times. And as I said before, we want a nice even transition from the lighter areas of the scene to the darker areas of the scene with minimal exposure blowout. And if the cameras do blow out, we want them to recover as quickly and as evenly as possible. So here we go with the exposure test. Let's go. So going up and out. One. Coming back down. Up and out. Two. Coming back down. Up and out. Three. All right. Coming back down. All right, all right. What do y'all think of that? What do y'all think? Now, based on what I see through the viewfinder, that wasn't too bad. It didn't really overexpose too much and it was very nice and even with the transitions. Not bad at all. Now, starting off, let's get into starting off. The next test we're gonna do is we're going to do a focus test. Now, starting off with the focus testing, we're gonna do the Auto focus first, and then we're gonna do the tap to focus. So let's pick our focal subjects. I like that pool chair over there. That's number one, okay? We can use the house in the background there. That could be number two, all right? And then this small lawn chair over here, that could be number three. So that's our focal subjects. Let's cycle through them three times, and y'all let me know how you feel the camera's doing in terms of focus. Let's go. So number one, pool chair. Okay. Number two, house in the background. And number three, lawn chair off to this side. Go again, pool chair. 
Okay. House in the background. Lawn chair off to this side. Number two. Last one. Uh, pool chair. House in the background. And chair off to this side. Number three. All right. Let me adjust my grip here. Matter of fact, spin myself. Ah. Ah, there we go. And then let me adjust my grip. And let's do this again. Pool chair, tap, locked up. Oh, that was very nice. And I like how the exposure auto fix too. Really quick focus there. House in the background, tap, locked up. That was pretty quick as well. Pool chair off to the right, tap, locked up. I like how once I tap it, it's going to the correct exposure, but left on its own, it's kind of making the scene dark. But overall, the focus speed there was pretty quick. Let's do it one more time. Pull chair, tap, locked up, really good stuff. House in the background, tap, locked up, really good stuff. And last but certainly not least, pull chair, tap, Locked up. Not bad. Not bad at all. All right. Now, the last thing I want to do is we're going to do a zoom test. All right. So y'all can see, y'all see that tree way out there in the distance. Oh, it looks like the breeze blew the door open. So I apologize if y'all can hear that background noise. But y'all see that tree way out there in the distance. Let's go ahead and lock focus on it. So we're locked on that tree now. And now we're going to zoom in. Let's zoom in to uh, 1.5 times first. Okay. Oops, too far. 1.2, 1.7, 1.5. So 1.5 times right here. What do y'all think? Now, the colors actually look really good. The detail, there's a little bit of detail loss, but it's not bad. All right. So this is 1.5 times zoom. Okay. Let's keep going. Up to two times now. Oh, too far. To one, one eight, two times zoom right here. All right, once again, noticeable detail loss, but the colors are pretty good still. All right, now let's max them out. Four times digital zoom here. And ugh, that kind of makes my eyes hurt staring at it, but you can see there's noticeable detail loss. The image itself is uh, up. It's super shaky. I can't even lie. So, what do y'all think? Now, me, myself, um, 1.5. So, right about here. Or two times zoom is perfect. If you want to get closer to your subject, you need to physically move closer after that point. But y'all let me know. This pretty much wraps up the 1080p testing outdoors daytime okay with the new mobile g5 uh rear facing primary 16 megapixel camera now what i'm going to do is we're going to spin the cameras around and i'm going to give you all a similar test with the front facing 16 megapixel camera also in 1080p so i will be right back i'll see y'all in a second all right everyone and now we just got some real nice stationary front-facing footage with the front-facing 16 megapixel camera on the new mobile G5, okay? So once again, we're out here by the pool and you know, I'm not feeling too good today, so we're not gonna do too much moving around. This is just gonna be some really nice stationary front-facing footage. Let me know what y'all think of the image quality, the overall detail retention, the focus, the exposure, the audio, y'all know how the story go. Let me know what you think of the video down below, all right? So looking through the viewfinder here, it actually looks really good. Now it's kind of making my skin tone a little red. It's like a reddish brown. That's not quite right. Um, in real life, I'm like a mocha brown, but it's kind of giving me like a reddish hue. So, you know, it's not doing the absolute best job, but it's not too bad. It's not bad at all. And let me see. If I move the camera around, 
Okay. So it gets a little bit darker exposure there. Oh yeah, we got super dark there. Come over here. See if I can get that exposure to fix itself just right. All right, uh, kind of overexposes the background. Uh, still red. Um, more red. Anyways, <laughs> y'all get the idea. I tried. Uh, let me know what y'all think of this footage, though. Now, let's run inside, and we're going to do some indoor daytime low-light testing with the front and the rear cameras on the new mobile G5. All right, I'll see y'all in a second. I will be right back. All right, everyone. So now we're testing out the rear and front facing cameras on the new mobile G5, and we're doing it in 1080p at 30 FPS indoors daytime low light. So this is the front facing 16 megapixel secondary camera, and this is being recorded in 1080p 30 FPS which is the maximum resolution for both primary cameras. And this is being recorded with no external audio hooked up. So we just got some nice stationary front facing vlog style footage here. Let me know what y'all think of the overall audio, the video quality, the stabilization, the focus, the exposure. Let me know down below what y'all think of this footage. Y'all know how it go. Now, let me spin the cameras around and let's give you an indoor daytime low light test with the rear facing 16 megapixel primary camera on the new mobile G5. I will be right back. I'll see y'all in a second. All right, everyone. So all I've done now is spin the cameras around and this is the rear facing 16 megapixel primary camera on the new mobile G5. Now I just wanna show y'all for verification purposes, y'all can see that this is indoor daytime low light. So y'all can see that's the only light we have lighting up the scene here today. There's no other light lighting up the scene. The only thing that's lighting up the scene is the light coming in through the window here. All right, just for verification purposes, I wanted to show y'all that. Now let's Put this down, let's position everything up, and let's continue on with the testing. So, get that about straight on. Let me slide forward a little bit. Pull out the table here. Put that a little bit more far forward. Matter of fact, let me slide that back. And let's angle them down. Alright, let me back up a little bit. And there you have it. That looks really good. So here y'all can see what the rear facing 16 megapixel cameras can do indoors, daytime, low light here. So y'all can see, just give y'all a nice stationary shot here. This actually doesn't look too bad. This doesn't look bad at all. Not at all. All right. And then if we do some focus testing here and we check for detail. So if I give y'all a nice close up here of the keyboard, that text is not the sharpest, but it's more than readable. And I gotta say the color science and the color uh, representation here looks pretty good. I would just want the uh, image to look a little bit sharper and it would be perfect. But for what this device is, that's pretty good. Let me pan through, y'all check it out. Not bad, not bad at all, at least in my opinion. All right, so now let's do some focus testing here. <laughs> Let me use a different focal subject today, something a little br bit brighter, something that might stand out, and let's test the focusing speeds. All right, so I got the uh, Bang & Olufsen BO Play E8 Sport. Long name, we got the BO, the BO Play Sport here, and check that out. Now, I did this on purpose, this brighter object on purpose, just to see how the cameras perform with lighter subjects as opposed to darker subjects. So you can see we got a nice light subject here with some nice dark backgrounds, and check out the focus. So if I tilt it up this way, it struggles, 
But once I tilt it to where the light hits it perfectly, it doesn't do half, half bad. Now, it's still struggling with the focus, but that's more than usable there. All right, let's take it out. Goes back to the keyboard, no problem. Bring it back in. Refocuses up, no problem. Let's try and get a nice close-up. Now, it does struggle when you try to get the close-up on it, but when I bring it out, it doesn't look half bad. Now, let me see if I bring it in and we tap. Yeah, with some assistance, that focus looks pretty good. I can't even lie. And look at the nice shallow depth of feel that it gets once we lock focus on the logo on the inside. Really good stuff there. Really good stuff indeed. All right, so really quick um, focus test and camera test with the new mobile G5. Indoors, daytime, low light, and y'all can see it did, it did take an extra second there to relock focus on the keyboard. Kind of had to help it a little bit, but it is what it is. So this concludes the 1080p testing for the new mobile G5. Now what I'm going to do for everyone is a little bit later on, after the sun goes down, we're going to retest these cameras again indoors nighttime artificial lighting and then we're going to wrap this overall camera video up so i will see y'all in a little bit for the final set of tests for the new mobile g5 we'll be right back okay all right everyone welcome back to the last set of camera tests with the new mobile g5 so these set of camera tests are going to be done in nighttime artificial lighting settings here and they're going to be done in 1080p at 30 fps with no external audio hooked up all right so let's do some quick verifications and jump straight into the testing so if i pan up and pan over here y'all can indeed see that this is indeed nighttime so you can see there is no light coming in through the window here and the only thing we have lighting up the scene, if we look up here, is our overhead artificial room lights. Okay? So now that we've done some quick verifications, let's put everything down, angle everything up, and start off with the testing. All right? So let's get that straight on. Then let's angle that down. I need to slide a little bit closer. Boom. Just like that. So now let's check out the detail retention in this lower light scenario. So let's see if we can get a nice close up on the keys on the keyboard here and see how the camera does. So if we look at the keys here, it's doing a pretty good job. Now, these keys are readable, but they could be a little bit sharper. Let's see if we bring it in a little closer. You can see it does get a little grainy. All right. So although it is readable, it can be a little bit sharper, especially in this lighting scenario. But for what this device is, that's still pretty good in my opinion. All right? Good stuff there. Now let's test out the focusing speeds in this scenario. And then we can wrap this video up. Okay? So let's bring back in the Bang & Olufsen case here. The BL Play 8. Truly wireless earbud case, and let's do some focusing tests here. Now, this is it, ugh, this is using completely uh, continuous autofocus here. So let's see how it does. Take out the earbud case. It locks back on the keyboard. No problems. That was relatively quick. Let's bring the air, earbud case back in, and you can see it did take a little bit of an extra second to lock up focus, and it's not as sharp. So that's one. Let's do this two more times. Take it out, lock focus back, bring it back in. Takes a little bit of an extra second to get the focus. Take it out one more time, bring it back in. Yeah, now let's check out the smaller text there. It's definitely struggling to get that. Take it out, bring it in. It's definitely struggling with the continuous autofocus to get that. Let's assist it a little bit. See if we can make it better. Okay, so we did make it noticeably sharper. 
but it's still a little bit difficult to read to my eye. But again, for this lighting scenario, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. All right. All right. So real quick, um, nighttime artificial lighting test here for the primary 16 megapixel camera on the new mobile G5. And you can see it's definitely struggling to relock focus on the keyboard. So let's help it out. Boom, and now it's locked the focus back. Now what I want to do is I want to test out the front-facing cameras for the final time in this lighting scenario, and then we'll bring the video to a close. So hold on one second, and I'll be right back. I'll see y'all in a minute. All right, everyone, and here we have it, the final front-facing camera test with the front-facing 16 megapixel camera on the new mobile G5. So we just got a real quick stationary uh, vlog style front-facing camera test here with no external microphone hooked up. And this is also being recorded in the maximum resolution for the new mobile G5, which is 1080p at 30 FPS. So y'all let me know what y'all think of this final clip. Now, that being said, what are my final thoughts on the cameras on this device, all right? Well, all in all, I have to say, this is the first new device that I've taken, taken that I've had the pleasure of taking a look at. And I gotta say, they have done a pretty good job with this device. And I would also have to say, all the things that they focused on with this device, they delivered really, really nicely. Is it the perfect device? No. Does it definitely have room for improvement? Yes. But that being said, how do I feel about these cameras? I would have to say overall, they are pretty good. And they more than rival uh, devices in this price point, even beating out some more expensive devices on the whole or overall, in my opinion. So are these some really good cameras? I would have to say yes. Are they the best cameras that I've ever experienced? No, not by a long shot. There definitely is some room for improvement. That being said, and I'll probably reiterate this in the full review, is this the device that I could see myself keeping? Honestly, probably not, okay? Is this a device that I can probably recommend to people? Yeah. If you're looking for a decent device in this price point, I can more than recommend this, depending on your usage style and what you do with your device. Yeah, I could recommend this, especially if you're not trying to break the bank. You should be happy with this. That being said, I do want to thank everybody for checking out this video. I hope you guys and gals enjoyed it. Please remember to leave any and all feedback and criticism, constructive criticism, constructive, respectful criticism down below in the comments. As always, keep it respectful, please. Let's get into a nice respectful conversation about how you feel the cameras on this device did overall, all right? Hope everyone is having a great evening. I hope you guys and gals are staying safe out there and I will catch everyone in my next video. Have a good one, everybody. We are out of here. Peace.